Hello, dear students. Today we finish our topic on environment. Lesson 9 of Unit 3, Sound of Thunder. But to begin with, let me ask you, have you ever heard about a butterfly effect? According to the official notion, in Gauss theory, the butterfly effect is the sensitive dependence on initial conditions in which a small change in one state of a nonlinear system can result in large differences in a later state. Проще говоря, эффект бабочки – это внесение незначительного изменения в начало истории, которое может привести к неожиданным большим изменениям в результате. Well, when we speak about our English grammar, can you think of conditional type which will take best of the butterfly effect? Conditional one, the real about the future results. Conditional two, unreal in present. And maybe conditional three, unreal in the past. Or even maybe mixed type of conditionals. When you speak about the beginning in the past and about the result in the present. Well, whatever you take, it definitely should be unreal. For example, the butterfly effect can be expressed by a mixed conditional. If something had been different in the past, the result would be different now. We are going to listen to a story. You can follow the story in your books, exercise 1b, page 86. And before we go to listening to it, have a look at these words. Future, safari, past, dinosaur, time machine, path, put, careful, change, butterfly, thunder. Can you think of any possible story which would unite all of these words together? If you want to dwell on it, stop the video, make your story, put down your notes and come back to listen to the original one. Are you ready to listen to it? Unit 3, Lesson 9, Exercise 1B Sound of Thunder, Abridged, After Ray Bradbury The sign on the wall burned in the darkness. Time Safari Incorporated, Safaris to any year in the past. You name the animal, we take you there, you shoot it. Does this safari guarantee I come back alive? We guarantee nothing, said the official, except the dinosaurs. He turned. This is Mr. Travis, your safari guide in the past. He'll tell you what and where to shoot. If he says no shooting, no shooting. If you disobey instructions, there's a stiff penalty of another $10,000 plus possible government action on your return. Hell and damn, Eccles breathed, the light of the machine on his thin face. A real time machine, he shook his head, makes you think. If the election had gone badly yesterday, I might be here now, running away from the results. Thank God, keep one. He'll make a fine president of the United States. Yes, said the man behind the desk. We're lucky. If Deutsche had gotten in, we'd have the worst kind of dictatorship. There's an anti-everything man for you. A militarist, anti-Christ, anti-human, anti-intellectual. People called us up, you know, joking, but not joking. Said, if Deutsche became president, they wanted to go live in 1492. Of course, it's not our business to conduct escapes, but to form safaris. Anyway, Keith's president now. All you've got to worry about is shooting the dinosaur. 
Eccles finished for him. A Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrant Lizard, the damnest monster in history. Sign this release. Anything happens to you, we're not responsible. Those dinosaurs are hungry. They moved silently across the room, taking their guns with them toward the machine. First a day, then a night, and then a day, and then a night. Then it was day, night, day, night, day. A week, a month, a year, a decade, AD 20, AD 2055, AD 2019, 1999, 1957, gun, the machine roared. The machine slowed, its scream fell to a murmur. The machine stopped, the sun stopped in the sky. Christ isn't born yet, said Travis. Moses has not gone to the mountain to talk with God. The pyramids are still in the earth, waiting to be cut out and put up. Remember that Alexander, Caesar, Napoleon, Hitler, none of them exists. That, Mr. Travis pointed, is the jungle of 60,000,055 years before President Keith. And that, he said, is the path laid by Time Safari for your use. Its purpose is to keep you from touching this world of the past in any way. Stay on the path. Don't go off it. For any reason, if you fall, there's a penalty. And don't shoot any animal we don't okay. Why? asked Eccles. We don't want to change the future. Not knowing it, we might kill an important animal, a small bird, a flower even, thus destroying an important link in a growing species. Say, we accidentally kill one mouse here. That means all the future families of this mouse are destroyed, right? And all the families of the families of that one mouse. With a stamp of your foot, you annihilate first one, then a dozen, then a thousand, a million, a billion possible mice. So what? Well, what about the foxes that will need those mice to survive? For want of ten mice, a fox dies. For want of ten foxes, a lion starves. Fifty-nine million years later, a caveman goes hunting saber-toothed tiger for food. But you, friend, have stepped on all the tigers in that region by stepping on a single mouse. So the caveman starves, and the caveman is an entire future nation. Destroy this one man, and you destroy a race, a people, an entire history of life. Step on a mouse, and you crush the pyramids. So be careful. Stay on the path. Never step off. Of course, maybe our theory is wrong. Maybe time can't be changed by us. Or maybe it can be changed only in little subtle ways. How do we know which animal to shoot? They're marked with red paint. We kill animals with no future that are never going to mate again. You see how careful we are? Out of the silence of the jungle, with a sound of thunder, Tyrannosaurus Rex appears. The tyrant lizard is so huge and horrible that Eccles gets shocked and scared. He decides to return to the machine. On his way back, without knowing it, he runs off the path and walks on the grass. Finally, he finds his way to the machine. The others kill the dinosaur and come back too. Travis came walking, glanced at Eccles. This son of a bitch nearly killed us, but it isn't that so much. Hell no, it's his shoes. Look at them. He ran off the path. God knows what he's done to time, to history. 1492, 1776, 1812, 1999, 2000, 2055. The machine stopped. The room was as they had left it, but not the same as they had left it. There was a feel, 
What sort of world it was now, there was no telling. But the immediate thing was the sign painted on the office wall, the same sign he had read earlier today on first entering. Somehow the sign had changed. Time Safari Incorporated. Safaris to any year in the past. You name the animal, we take you there. You shoot it. Eccles felt himself fall into a chair. Not a little thing like that, not a butterfly, cried Eccles. It fell to the floor, an exquisite thing, a small thing. Who? Who won the presidential election yesterday? The man behind the desk laughed. You're joking. You know damn well. Deutscher, of course. Who else? Eccles dropped to his knees. He scrabbled at the golden butterfly with shaking fingers. Can't we take it back? Can't we make it alive again? Can't we start over? Can't we? He did not move. He heard Travis shift his rifle. There was a sound of thunder. Well, that was the story. The sound of thunder. Were you able to guess correctly what all these words have in common? Let's have a look about the details of the story. What year is it? What country are our heroes in? It was 2055 AD and they were in the United States of America. AD is also can be replaced by CE, which means common era, and that is the abbreviation to explain that the year after Christ was born, Nashi Ere. Next question. What year do the characters in the story travel to? And what for? They traveled roughly 16 million years ago. They went on a safari hunt. How much does the safari cost? Around $10,000. How much is the penalty if you break the rules? Another $10,000. Last possible government actions on the return. Are the characters of the story happy with the results of the recent elections? Yeah, they didn't want the other candidate to win for his dictatorship ideas. Why can't the hunter step off the path? because it could change the way of history and cause the butterfly effect. What animals can they shoot? Only the ones marked with red, as they were to die anyway, with no big deal for the future. What happens during the hunt? The main character sees a dinosaur and gets scared, runs away and steps off the path. Are there any changes in the world they come back to? Yeah, the candidate they didn't like became the president. What would have happened if Eccles hadn't stepped on the butterfly? If he hadn't stepped on the butterfly, their world in the future wouldn't have changed. Explain the title of the story, Sound of Thunder. At the end of the story, there was a sound of thunder. Before it, the guide shipped his rifle, a private Svevitnitovko. And at the beginning, it was said that if a tourist didn't listen to the instructions, he would pay with not only money. So, sound of thunder. Это не только разлук грома. 
выстрел оружия тоже можно сравнить со звуком грома. Now, what are other possible stories representing the butterfly effect? Here is a short poem. We will read it and we will listen to it. Unit 3, Lesson 9, Exercise 2B. For want of a nail. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. A short one, isn't it? This poem was translated into Russian. And uh, you can find it under the title Потому что в кузнице не было гвоздя. I think you know such stories. And maybe you even heard or read a story about what can happen to a student if he has no pen to write a test. Doesn't it sound like another butterfly effect? So, what about the best idea explaining the sense of the whole poem? Variant number one is used to explain people the possible events that may follow a thoughtless act. Two, it shows that small actions can result in large after effects. And three, the rhyme is thus a good illustration of the butterfly effect. A small change at one place can result in large differences to a later state. Which variant do you think explains the sense of the poem best? The first, the second, or the third? What do you think? The story was written by Ray Bradbury and this wonderful author created not only this story, but many, many others. And he also had some ideas on the future. Here are three quotes from Ray Bradbury. There are worse crimes than burning books. One of them is not reading them. Есть более серьезное преступление, нежели сжигание книг. Одно из них – нежелание читать. We are an impossibility in an impossible universe. Мы есть результат невозможного в самой из невозможных вселенных. I don't try to describe the future. I try to prevent it. Я не пытаюсь описать будущее. Я пытаюсь предотвратить его. Stop the video and think about it. What stands behind these words? What actually did Ray Bradbury want to tell you? And which of his quotes do you like most? Have you chosen? Can we continue? Another short poem with another wonderful meaning and a possible butterfly effect. Unit 3, Lesson 9, Exercise 4A. It's both town and country air that we ultimately share. So polluting one expect to get a butterfly effect. If the key to all our health is to share in nature's wealth, then we'd best invest a plan to save our wildlife while we can. So, can you say that this poem is about a butterfly effect also? If yes, then what problems does it describe? And I wonder, can you translate it into Russian on your own? Почему бы не остановить видео и не попробовать перевести данное стихотворение самостоятельно? Возможно, 
у вас получится перевести его в рифму. And while you are translating, here are around three more questions to you. If you were to write a story to the people about environmental problems and ask them to be more careful, what would you write about? What genre would you choose? Would your story have a happy end? Translate and think. That's it for about environment.